This video is based on a true story. It is engraved in the rock worldwide, and when we read our DNA, it's what we encounter. So, let's let those who preceded us, through what they saw, tell us about it. To our great-great-great-grandparents who are now gone, let's give them a voice by imagining that they could have told us about their adventures, their lived epics, starting with a time when none of them had anything to say. It's my turn, okay? Let's be honest, I'm not actually the first. The exact origin is unknown, possibly starting in a primitive ocean or from fat bubbles. I'm much larger than a fly, but already have a phospholipid bilayer. My starting point, a cellular membrane has formed. Inside, I felt acid start to animate me. The base of a machinery with mechanics still poorly oiled, because most of the experiments here are doomed to failure. And after thousands of millennia of trial periods, a tiny bag of chemicals, a kind of dynamic equilibrium chaos, began to hiccup as if imploded to duplicate itself. An insignificant little bubble thus became a cell, a kind of senseless filter, a barely one micron ball of life. I feed myself by letting the necessary pass through, by osmosis, through my cellular membrane. It's a bit risky, but not too bad. I live stuck like a microbe to hydrothermal vents. I silently absorb minerals, hidden in the depths at the ocean floor. From living in a proximity more than annoying, I have taken the form of a cell qualified as giant. And here we are starting to duplicate and replicate ourselves, producing oxygen in quantity. And many of us start to die, murder, intoxicate, oxidation for destiny. I persevere as a bacterium that has thrived. I embraced the excess oxygen, making it my passion and strength. With others, we organized ourselves into colonies, glued, tight, welded, attached for life. By living too close together, we ended up inside one another. Together, millions of single cells now form a society. Without realizing it, we invented what is called multicellularity a life made up of specialized cells and by changing scale, a new level of complexity has emerged. I have become an organism, as they say, more than the sum of my parts. To reproduce without anyone to play touch thingy with, I make my little ones all by myself from one of my cells, my motto, cloning. I have thus lived 2.3 billion years without sex. So don't talk to me about abstinence or your exes. And after a little billion years of mixing its genes, of copulating, life began to explode. One trajectory resulted in this. I'm also known as Pakaya. I can now move and wriggle, proudly from the tail end and move forward. At last, I have both a mouth and an anus. An entrance and exit are real luxuries. Jellyfish say they do without it. I don't find it very hygienic, but there's never really anything dirty when we talk about biology. Life has become colorful and diverse. Here, the risk of being eaten is growing. I'm one of the biggest though, with my 10 centimeters. Danger is already something I've taken the time to get to know. In these new food chains, I'm not at the top. Trilobites and obopinia make me panicky. The insistent gaze of Anomalocaris reminds me that my soft body is a delicacy. Sometimes the Cambrian sucks. Seriously, what are you complaining about? I put a voiceless sea sponge. Okay, you have two, three predators, but you can see, move and run away. I reassure him not to worry, as having few organs is common in the Cambrian period despite my lack of heart, kidney, liver, and intestines. That's true, and I never get anxious. I'm one of those who don't have a nervous system. Nerves lead to consciousness. Being a sponge is carefree, which leaves me a bit stunned. And she tells me that she's in... Not either. When the Ordovician arrived, I got a bit big-headed. I now have a helmet that extends my skeleton, protecting my brain with its hardness. I think I feel good in my skin. All life on this planet is confined to the oceans. The continents are ruled by deserts, winds, and volcanoes. I still sometimes venture to the surface and look at the open-air continents facing me. Nothing but wind and stones as far as the eye can see. Here, there has only ever been the unknown. The water level drops, brutal. Oxygen and temperatures drop, fatal. Hell descends into the ocean, and it comes from the cold. Everyone starts to die, irrevocably around me. It's like a reverse flood, but the sea has mysteriously vanished. We, surviving vertebrate fish, with our skeleton inside, evolve in an ocean world, zigzagging through reefs between mollusks and giant arthropods, such as Eurypterides, Silurian sea scorpions, whose articulated cutting claws terrorize the tropics and could well put an end to my family tree. 
In addition to the mandibles, I'm harassed by the tentacle. My hunters have sticky feet on their heads and move in reverse. These are fauna of nearly 10 meters long. They are called orthoceros. In this bizarre nightmare, the mutations give me a jaw to speak. I have forged a character, a boldness, an obsessive fascination with the surface. I explore the riverbeds endlessly. The edges are green and the water sweet. How do they survive in the air? All these delicate bouquets of moss near the water, making six meters high, proudly stand on the bank kinds of huge rods. Giant mushrooms in a political campaign. You can hear them yelling in a chemical language. Follow us plants, come animals, we will make the earth tender and full of water. Venture out into the open air, come and die there, contribute to making soils where one can take root. Your imitation of mushrooms is frankly lame, say arthropods who walk in the mud. I leave them the care of being the first to set their articulated feet on land. The mushroom enzymes will break them down, nourishing the soil and altering the stones. When the Devonian begins, well sheltered, far from sharks, I switched to submarine mode and start to get out of the deep end. From low tide to low tide, I surface more and more often. My head is flat and my eyes are always open since I don't have eyelids. I wade in shallow and poorly oxygenated waters, which are often dried up for a large part of the year. I ended up in conditions that put a lot of pressure on me, of selection. I inhale the fresh air fully, without bones developing in my fins. Being too cautious often makes us wait until it's too late. Under the appearance of a large, bare-skinned, sensitive tadpole without a bathrobe, I will fully emerge from the water and set out to conquer a new world. Millipedes, scorpions, insects and mites have made their hole in the ferns of the Devonian. And here I am become something else, just for the rhyme. Let's take a pause. Time passes tic-tac-tic, they now call me Tic-Talic. I've taken the step, I've come out of my puddle, new scene, a new act. In the water, evolution will continue, but this time without me. From now on, my homeland will be on Earth. I will live in the atmosphere. I must have gone too far, never to see the sea again, shielding my wet eyes with a blink. When I think that I have for a long time struggled to breathe, my body now benefits from an over-oxygenated air. I'm tired of the constant smell of burning from the frequent forest fires everywhere around me. Everywhere, all around, you can find horsetails and giant ferns. On the ground, there are massive, insane millipedes. Up to two meters long for Arthropleura, a creeping terror that lives in the undergrowth. I seriously consider preparing my funeral when I see the size of the insects. And it's the first time I've seen wood. It's beautiful. A plant claims I invented pollen, which is a seed that surfs on the breeze, and you wouldn't be allergic to it. It's evolved sport. For us, it's a refurbishment. A tree that talks? I don't know what to answer. I sneeze and suddenly I start laying well protected behind a hard shell, filled to the brim with food. Soon will come the time to try on fur, a good way to regulate temperature. A few million years later, I seriously took to the jaw. My therapsid head is impressive, and I can say that I'm not the only one. You can find crests and sails among my cousins. Is it to seduce? Don't be so certain. They heat up or cool down depending on how they expose themselves or not to solar radiation. They still puff up their chests to get noticed, intimidate, seduce, flirt, and mate. But soon, we are all going to have to face a terrible new mass extinction. I heard the ground rumble, the earth tear apart. A supercontinent for supervolcanoes. On Pangaea, jumping on the living cursed era at the end of the Permian. To get an idea or a drawing, imagine a fresco of the apocalypse and a black sky, all the sun eclipses. We really thought it would be our last dance. We stayed on track, inextricable strokes of luck. Quite a few mammalian reptiles have nevertheless passed between the drops of lava, but for 90% of other species, the finding is much more serious. I have lost many loved ones, immense sadness, alas. All forever erased from the map, extinct the dinocephalians. Of my Gorgonopsian cousins, none remain. But I persisted, insisted and continued to exist to search for rare marshes to drink from, thin leaves to hope to eat. Serious heat stroke, still alive, I have cold blood, generations follow one another without fail, I am still here. Millions of years pass and see the survivors spread out, taking over space. It was just a matter of waiting. Life has taken over, for me, it continues. Too small, tough, 
Lucky, I'm not dead. Crises, I will see others again. Pangaea is now completely dislocated. Cumulus clouds abundantly water the forests. Rich in conifers, such as firs, with kinds of pine cones, some creatures became nostalgic for the ocean. They returned there to become bigger. This is the case of the ichthyosaurs, but also of the placodonts and some amphibians. There is definitely no more room for us in all that is marine. I prefer to stay on Earth, mingle with armies of crocodilians. Fragile, agile, I run around everywhere, climb trees, hide in holes. A long game of hide and seek that is not about to stop, especially since the first dinosaurs have just arrived. Back then, many could devour, crush and rip me to pieces. We even have potential predators that can fall on us from the sky, looking for things to put under the teeth that adorn their beak. All things considered, it might be a good option to stay small, to be discreet. Just because we're not imposing doesn't mean we're insignificant. In times of turmoil, those at the top of the hierarchy are often the first to fall. Too big, too dependent, they are tributaries of abundance. The kings of the jungle, often the first to disappear when things start to go bad for all the other species. Now all our females have hair, and some of our males even have mammary glands. It's time to embrace what we can do. We're going to call ourselves mammals. In the epic settings of the Jurassic, we occupy all the ecological niches. Frutifosaur stirs the earth to find termite mounds. Beaver Carter eats fish in the Great Lakes, it's the hook. Some of us live in holes, and there are many smaller ones for whom trees are shelters. In the forest, the canopy is my domain. From up there, I observe what's happening below. I watch the backs of the stegosaurs, listen to the cries of the allosaurs. I admire their strength, their color, and their slowness. We are always waiting for our time. It will soon come in the Cretaceous, but until then, keep a low profile. From the canopy, I hear sauropod tails snapping. Keeping a low profile, I observe. I see feathered dinosaurs nearly as small as me. The other raptors have growing heads and shrinking, ridiculously small arms. But these creatures have long arms, a sharp body and a light skeleton. And in the skin and lightly feathered, they resemble a dangerous yet stylish mix of ducks, lizards and chickens. I've seen these clumsy creatures start to glide and in a snap of a few million years, there they are, already flying. Eventually, these feathered dinos will gain colors and most importantly, a voice. In nature's great field, the bird will sing. What noise do the mosasaurs make under the water as they roam the inland seas of North America, which have become the hunting grounds for these giant sea reptiles that are related to lizards and also to snakes? On Earth, plants have developed more than one trick to disperse. On some trees, we now find seeds with flesh around them. They attract us with their colorful flowers during the day and nectar at night. What a waste to have lived nearly four billion years without ever tasting fruit. I stuff myself all day next to ankylosaurs. Together, we uncovered a real treasure. Finding that eating fermented fruits makes you drunk. Titanoceratops sunbathing overshadowed me. The jungle kings are throned and outnumbered. But soon, we will take power almost unintentionally. Melting craters, eruptions galore. The giants are suffocating tsunamis this way out. Excite the pterosaurs, mosasaurs, ammonites, and dinosaurs. To put it simply, in short, everything that weighs more than 25 kilos. Only a few seeds, birds, frogs, crocs, fish, and sharks remain. We must start over, but we'll be okay because it is from this heap of ashes and dust as the volcanoes begin to quiet, that the reign of mammals finally begins. Lost in my thoughts, I've seen millions of years go by. In the great temperate deciduous forests, I saw the seasons appear. The vegetation has recovered well, with no more dinosaurs. We now have beautiful passion flowers. On Earth, there are no more T-Rex, but euphorbias and latex. We have slowly seen the inland seas of North America, Africa and elsewhere dry up. The mercury then rose rapidly. We gained 8 degrees in 20,000 years. We mammals rule under the water and on the earth, but none of us are in the air. Then the bats arrived with their oversized hands. I also saw the terrestrial ancestors of the cetaceans evolve from distant cousins, real small ungulates. By going back to live in the water, they are going to gain pounds. To breathe better, 
their nostrils will migrate to the top of their head, transforming them into imposing beasts. On Earth, the only place where the game is different is South America, which in its isolation has seen the emergence of huge birds, three meters tall and over 200 kilos. These birds resemble raptors, almost like dinosaurs. Even in the tropical forests of that time, we find giant omnivorous freshwater turtles. Titana boa, a two-ton snake spanning over 13 meters, makes it feel like we're back in Gondwana. On my side of the Atlantic, imposing mammal species like Andrusarchus mogoliensis, a warthog-like carnivore, appear. A kind of hyena on steroids mounted on sabo, one meter 80 at the withers, for a weight of 800 kg. The tropical forests of Central Asia now host four-storey buildings that are moving. Paraceratherium, which is devoid of horns, displays nearly 20 tons on the scale. Who would have thought that mammals could one day become so imposing? In the water, some ancestors of cetaceans even grow hair on their teeth. They filter cope pods, krill, with what must be called baleen, use their ears connected to their jaws for echolocation, and will become the heaviest creatures the Earth has ever known remaining prey, one of the favorite dishes on the menu. From the diet of Megalodon, enough to leave one astonished and speechless, Dinotherium and Platybelodon. How did we get here and who am I? To find out, I leaned over a puddle and saw two big eyes appear on the surface facing me. With my binocular stereoscopic vision, I find that I have a somewhat atypical head. My hands and feet have five fingers with elegant nails. I lost my claws and don't have large teeth. And after experiencing the sea, the mud, the holes, the trees, the squats, I became a very old branch on which primates grow. And who, without seeing time pass, began to stand up? I close my eyes and dream briefly. Of those who have transmitted through time, life, and thanks to whom we are still here today. Regardless of their size, weight, height, or body hair, whether they sported fins, gills or scales in each of their lives, without exception, over and over again, across millions of generations, despite the great extinctions that have befallen them. They have maintained this long, unbroken chain of life. By evading earthly and celestial fires, they have never truly discovered rest. Because when death came, they fell asleep. Their transitioning heritage was already passed on. Even today, is their lineage still alive? It is here, it is in you. Because they are a little piece of us.